This story was submitted by Augustopia. It was the middle of the summer, and my parents had left me for the weekend to go to our house in Cape Cod. It's about a two-hour drive away, so it's no big deal for them to leave me alone for a few days. My mom had made some pulled pork and pasta for me to heat up whenever, and I had some money if I wanted to order a pizza. Things were all good. The first night I was alone and stayed up till 3 in the morning playing Xbox, so I woke up really late the next day. I checked my phone when I woke up and saw that it was a little past 1. I had made plans to play some street hockey with my friends at 3, so I threw myself out of bed and stumbled into the shower. I take really long showers, so when my parents are gone I go mental. I was in there for about 45 minutes, on my phone scrolling through Reddit and Twitter and whatnot, when I heard my front door open. The bathroom is directly up the stairs from the back door, and the thing is pretty loud when it opens and closes. I immediately froze since obviously I was supposed to be alone. I waited for about two minutes, ears trained and trying to hear anything else, but I heard nothing. I figured it was just the wind, or maybe my parents were home early, so I turned off the shower, wrapped a towel around myself, and slowly walked down the stairs to check it out. The stairs to the kitchen, where the back door is, are pretty tight and walled in, so it's essentially like walking down a narrow staircase, but replacing the rail with a wall, so I can't see into the kitchen when I walk down. Even though my house is old as shit, and every step on the stairs makes a very loud creak, I still took my time and tried to be as quiet as possible. I probably took 45 seconds walking down all 12 of the stairs, so when I get to the second to last stair, right before I see around the corner into the kitchen, I take a little breath to compose myself. In my mind I was being stupid, there obviously wasn't anything in the kitchen, there's no way I wouldn't have heard another noise, and there's no reason for them to still be in the kitchen, even if they were burglars or something. After sort of mentally chastising myself for being such a wuss, I sort of chuckled to myself for being so stupid, and just walked normally the last two stairs, and turned the corner into the kitchen. Standing about two feet in front of me, in the middle of the kitchen is a man, perfectly still, with a massive smile across his face, just staring at me. The thing I remember most vividly wasn't his face, or his smile, but his arms. They weren't just at his side. He held them in the strangest, most abnormal position I've ever seen. They were where one would normally hold their arms, but he had rotated them to the point where they were almost completely reversed, as well as lifting them up a little bit behind himself. I don't know why I remember this so much, but it's just the most demonic, abnormal position I've ever seen. Honest to God, I think I almost had a heart attack right there. Looking back, I can realize how fucking creepy the situation was, but in the moment I just took a step towards him and punched him as hard as I could in the jaw, sort of half slapping slash pushing him towards the ground. The second I connected, I beelined up the stairs, dropping my towel in the kitchen. With my heart beating out of control, I sprinted into my room and locked the door behind me. I then quickly put a chair up against the doorknob like you see on TV. Almost without thinking, I immediately called 911 and nearly in tears, told the operator what was happening. As I sat on the floor of my room, in practically the fetal position, staring at the door, praying that the cops would be there soon, I noticed the light coming from the gap between my door had stopped. That fucker was standing outside of my door. There's no words to describe the feeling I had. I was paralyzed with fear, watching the shadow across the bottom of the door shift in tiny ways. I stayed balled up, staring at the gap, praying that the man would go away for what seemed like an hour. All the while, the 911 operator was asking, Hello? Sir? Sir, are you there? Hello? I didn't want to make a noise, and even if I wanted to move my arms to bring the phone to my mouth, I don't think I could have. Eventually the light returned to the gap, and I heard the faintest of footsteps, slowly creaking the wooden floorboards as he walked down the hall. It was silent for minutes as I sat there curled up, unable to even speak. I heard banging on the front door, 
and the sound of two officers entering my house. I finally felt safe, and I opened the door to the two of them standing there. I almost cried. Nowadays my parents don't leave me home alone anymore, thank God, and I check every lock on the house before going to bed. I still get nightmares occasionally, and my heart starts racing whenever I see someone standing still, but I'm doing alright. Even working with sketch artists and a few lineups, the police never found whoever the fuck was in my house. That sends shivers down my spine every time I look outside, half expecting to see him standing across the street smiling under a lamp post. This story was submitted by an anonymous viewer. It started about two years ago. I work in security in a very high traffic area. I see and talk to thousands of people a day. I don't usually remember faces since I see so many on a daily basis. It was a Monday, and I'd just gotten home from work. As I usually do, I shower, eat dinner, and then relax. When I got out of the shower, however, is when it all started. I usually turn my phone off when I get home from work, but this time I must have forgotten, and I saw the message light blinking, and it was a message from an unknown number. It said, Thanks for helping me, handsome. I immediately thought it was one of my friends pulling my leg like they have in the past. I said something along the lines of, Ha ha, very funny, John. You've got nothing better to do? About two minutes later, I got a reply back. This isn't John. So, I thought of my other friend, Mark. Again, two minutes later, I got a reply. This isn't Mark. So, now I'm confused, because the only people who have my number are my friends, my family, and my job. I just don't give it out. So I asked, who is this? I got a reply. You helped me today. I want to thank you. I said, how did you get my number? They replied with, don't you worry. I have something for you, handsome. You look great in that green tank top. My heart stopped. I was wearing a green tank top at that very moment. I stopped replying, and I called up my friends and told them. They said to call the police and make a report. So, trying not to panic, I called the police, and they came within 20 minutes, although it felt like an hour. I explained everything, and I showed them the text messages. They said to come with them to the station so that I could make a report. They also said that since this was the first time it had happened, there wasn't really much else they could do. They made the report with copies of the texts, and said if anything else happens to contact them. I said okay, took a copy of the report, and went home. I was a little on edge the rest of the night, but eventually I passed out. I hadn't heard anything for a few days after, but on that Friday, it started again. It was non-stop this time. Every day I would get a message. I see you. Don't look so nervous. This went on for months. I saved every message, and I went back to the police station again, where I saw the same officer who had helped me last time. I gave him copies of everything. He says that it was a lot, but that the messages weren't threatening, so it would go away soon. Again, it stopped for a few days. Then I got a text that sent chills up my spine. It was a picture from inside my apartment, with a message that said, Too bad you weren't home. I'll see you soon. From work, I called up the cops. They sent a car there, but said that no one was in the house, and there were no signs of a forced entry, so they have no idea how they got in. Needless to say, I stayed with my friend for a few days until I could find a new place. That was nine months ago and I haven't heard anything since. The cop said that nothing came of the investigation. I'm happy it's over, but I still look over my shoulder, and I'm wary of new people 
that seemed too friendly. This story was submitted by Azza. So, before I start, I would like to say I wasn't the most intimidating of people, which is the main reason for me taking karate classes when I was younger. I also had long hair, which made me prone to being picked on, and being about 4 foot 11 and weighing under 6 stone, there wasn't much I could do if bullies tried to physically hurt me. This never really happened though, it was always just words. I skipped karate one evening due to being invited to a sleepover, which in my case was very rare. We arranged to meet at 6.30pm. Since it was just starting to become winter, it was already dark by then. I was waiting outside of a shop, and I see my friend walking up, but with a weird look on his face. He gestures subtly at the man behind him, and pulls me into the shop. We buy the usual type of sleepover foods, biscuits, cokes, and of course, sweets. He tells me about how the guy behind him had been following him since he left his house. I shrug this off, seeing as we lived in a busy part of town. My friend, however, didn't seem to be too happy to forget about it. I grabbed a six pack of coke, white chocolate cookies, and two packs of strawberry bonbons. We paid for our stuff and cleared out. The moment we stepped out of the door, my friend froze, and then pulled me back inside. He whispered to me, that's the man. Seeing as we were in a very small shop, and we had both known the owner for at least four years, we went and asked him for help. He said he'd close the shop ten minutes early and walk us to my friend's house. This was fairly normal as he's a very good friend of our parents. After closing up, we look around, and saw that the man was waiting. He walked off the way my friend Steve had come from, so we went the longer way. I was a bit freaked out now, but really glad that the shopkeeper was with us. He dropped us off at Steve's house. We thanked him and offered him a drink, which he declined and went on his way. We went inside and locked the door behind us. We said a quick hey to his parents and we ran upstairs. We watched a couple of films, eating all of the junk food that we bought at the shop. My friend crashed on his bed, and I crashed on an old sofa in his room. I was nearly asleep now, when I heard what sounded like raindrops hitting the floor. I turned around and saw that Steve's cat had pushed the bonbons off of the stand and they'd scattered all over the floor. That bloody cat, I thought to myself. I let the cat out of the room and started picking up the sweets. As I'm doing this, I notice something. There's a dark figure on the floor, now groaning quietly. I immediately jump on whatever or whoever it is, adrenaline pumping. I jam my foot into its neck and screamed for someone to help. Steve woke up, telling me to shut the fuck up or something like that. I shouted again. At this point, Steve had turned on the light, and was shouting for his dad while I was struggling with what I could now see to be a man on the floor. I remember Steve's dad busting through the door, and without saying a word, jumped on the guy. I can't say what time this was happening at, everything's a blur. I don't really remember much after that. All I really know is, if I hadn't bought those bonbons, and that clumsy cat hadn't knocked them over, it may have been a different story. That was a good seven to eight years ago now, and the cat that effectively saved us has now passed away. But it still makes me smile every time I see some strawberry bonbons. This story was submitted by Cruel World. I am a female, 25 years old, average, and I live alone in a small town of maybe 1500 people, if that. I have worked at the same job, which is at a factory in the next town over, for two years. Until recently I had a pit bull for my protection, and that's all I thought I needed, until now. 
About three months ago, we got this guy in our department named Jesse. I generally train the new people because I float, as in I do everyone's breaks, therefore I can run all of the presses. I trained Jesse for his first week. My initial impression was that he was a sweet, shy kid. Even though he was a little older than me, and much bigger, his demeanor made him seem young and innocent. Usually within a week or two, the new employees make friends and fit into the social aspect to our work. But not Jesse. He only ever talked to me or our boss, Jeff, and it was only to ask questions about work. That is until about the third week. We all shut down and went to lunch together for a pizza party that our department was rewarded with having zero defects. Jesse sat at my table and ate silently, and when we were done, we went outside to smoke. He broke the silence by asking me for a lighter. I handed one over, and he started asking me questions about where I was from, where I lived, and about my dog, because I had mentioned him. At this time, it was just small talk to me. I had answered honestly about being single, and alone, and where I lived, because it was such an innocent conversation. We worked the second shift, by the way. That's important. Anyway, 11.30 rolls around, and I clocked out and went home. Around 1.30am, I am dozing off on the couch, when Izzy, my pit bull, started going insane at the window. I looked out, and no one was there. I laid back down, and honestly thought it was a squirrel or something walking down the alley by my house. I was not worried at all. About 15 minutes later, there was a bright flash of light in my window, and Izzy almost went through the window. That got my attention. Someone was out there, and they took a picture of me. I called the police, and they came by, asked questions, and looked around, but found nothing. I told my boss about it, and he had Jesse walk me to my car every night. Nothing happened for a couple of days. It was Friday at about 3 a.m. when there was another flash in my window. I acted like I hadn't noticed, and waited a few minutes and went to the bathroom. I called the police and hung up, and took my seat back on the couch and waited. I could see a faint silhouette of a head at the bottom of my window, so I was hoping that the police would catch this creep in the act. And they did. This is where my story gets crazy. The police catch the guy. Jesse was the guy. He was also the chief of police's nephew, and the police wouldn't even make a report. They basically said I shouldn't be so petty to want to press charges. I went to my boss, but without a police report he couldn't do anything. He hated it, but his hands were tied. I avoided Jesse after that. Suddenly he was very vocal and social. He told all of our co-workers that I tried to sleep with him, and I asked him to come over after work, and when he refused I tried to call the cops and get him fired. He no longer seemed innocent. His silence now seemed creepy and ominous. I saw every mistake I had made telling him about my life and where I lived. A couple weeks later, nothing had happened since the police had come over. I put Izzy on the chain to potty while I took a shower. When I went back to retrieve her, she was lying in the dirt and wouldn't move. Her mouth was all burnt looking, and she died by morning. My vet said she had somehow ingested lye. I was crushed. I called the police, who again could do nothing, no witnesses. Work started getting bad. Jesse quickly had made friends and ruined my name. People I worked with since I was hired hated me and thought I killed my dog. I wanted to quit, but couldn't financially. Then one day, Jesse wasn't there. It was the most relaxed I'd been since the first night my pictures were taken. My boss was walking me to my car these days. He never believed the rumors. I went home and walked into a totally wrecked house. My back door was open and I again called the police. They walked around and said that I had left my door open and an animal must have got in. I asked them if that animal must have stole my underwear and photo albums too. No, I must have misplaced those. I cried all night. I didn't have anywhere to go, 
and now thanks to Jesse, anyone to even call and talk to. I took a day off of work, and when I went back, Jesse actually tried to talk to me. I told him that I didn't care who he was related to, and he had killed my dog and wrecked my house, and I had no interest in dating or even being friends. I was almost in tears, and he just smiled. Then he said something I will never forget. He said, You don't have to consent. I left immediately, and I moved into a motel, and went to a temp service to get placed at another factory in my area. I deleted social media, and have basically fallen off the face of the earth to anyone I had known. I am in a different town now, so if anything else happens, a different police department will come. I always thought that if someone messed with me, I'd hit them, or yell at them, or basically I would be tough. I'm not. I'm scared. I need some advice. I know I have left a lot out, so if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. I will include a link in the description to the original post. You can give advice there, or I'm sure they'll read some of the comments so you can leave some advice below. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. If you would like a chance to have your story featured in an upcoming video, make sure you check out the description for information on how to submit your stories. I'd like to give a big thank you to Lazy Masquerade for helping me out on this collaboration, and if you haven't already subscribed to his channel, I highly recommend you go over there for some awesome scary content. While you're over at his channel, don't forget to check out our other collaboration video that we did. Also before I close up this video, I would like to let you know that a lot of us horror narrators have been working with Top 15s, and Top 15s has been nice enough to set up a site for our community so everyone can share their stories without having to worry about copyright infringement. The name of the site is brosgrim.co. It's currently in the beta phase, so we would love for you to come over and give us some advice, as well as share your stories over there. I'll have a link in the description if you'd like to be one of the first to join. I hope to see you there. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you in the next video. And just remember, it's always scarier if it's true.